to Gail's Garden Herbs and More. Always, I have, I, you know, I've always got several projects going. I'm drying a few herbs and some orange peels. And I'm going to, this is for making my almond milk. And I'm going to put it in the dehydrator and dry it and make almond flour. And I've got other stuff going too. But what I want to talk to you today about is your gut. And um, some things about, well, let's start out with what, a couple of things you might want to avoid. Now we can say, um, oh, I don't have the celiac disease or whatever. Well, I don't either, but I do have a sensitivity. And I tell you, since I have got away from the wheat and the gluten, it has helped tremendously. Now you might say, of course, if you eat that old white bread, that's going to make you sick. Everybody knows that. But what about good old fashioned sprouted multigrain bread? Well, that is better. And you might be able to handle it a little bit better. But it's still wheat and gluten. And you really have to get away from that. Now, I can say this, and it was extremely hard for me. I've tried several times, but I've been off from it now for close to two months. And I, it has been amazing, the difference. I don't want to go back as much as I love breads. But, you know, it, it's really hard because you still have this craving. Well... There are other types of flowers. There's what's known as ancient grain flowers, and I don't have the um, front of the bag here for you. But look for ancient grain flowers or gluten-free flowers. This actually makes wonderful pancakes and muffins, but I made a pie crust with it, and it looked looked beautiful, made beautiful picture. <laughs> But when I bit into it, the consistency was not very good in my mouth. I, it just did not make a good pie crust at all. Um, you might get used to it. I guess you could try. Maybe you could find some tweaks that would make it better. But when I tried it, it was not so good. But it's great for pancakes and muffins. There's all kinds of flours. You just have to check them out and Google and see if they have gluten or wheat in them. You don't want any gluten or wheat. There's almond flour, coconut flour. There's rice flour. There's... Um, chickpea flour. I've been experimenting with some of these and making some flat fry breads. Now frying is probably not the best for your gut either, but once in a while I just need something, um, some sort of a carb. Okay, corn is probably not the easiest or the best, but I have been using corn tortillas, not flour tortillas. They have your wheat and gluten, but corn tortillas that don't have any flour in them. And I wrap a lot of stuff. One thing that's really, really good is to um, cook up some hamburger meat and put tomato sauce and spices and stuff. And then some beans, mix it together and lightly fry these. Um, and you make wonderful little tacos with them that are really good. I even put scrambled eggs and veggies and stuff in them. I mean, just sometimes I get a craving for... Um, some sort of a bread and so these are a few of the things that I use you may come up with some other ideas but this is kind of to help get you started on some ideas of what you might do um, there's other things too but I don't want to make this video too long but the main thing don't look at these these are not what you want to uh, major on what you want to major on is veggies that's some lettuce growing I'm got to start off my um, rose in the front. Rose uh, rose petals are really good for you as long as they're not the kind that um, from the store where they've had a lot of chemicals. You want organic. But rose petals are good. But yeah, there's some lettuce there. Okay, things like parsley and chard. Kale is wonderful, especially when you grow it yourself. Uh, store-bought kale I don't care for. I thought I didn't like kale for a long time until somebody sent me some kale seeds and I grew them and the young tender ones are the best. And they're yummy. Asparagus is wonderful. I have a cream soup that I use asparagus and some other vegetables. I need to make a video on that. It is fantastic. And fruits are good too. These are elderberries. Down here is a blueberry plant. They're not the best looking yet. They're, well, my elderberry actually looks pretty good. My blueberries haven't come out yet. They will. It's getting there. 
Sweet potatoes are really good and super good for you, too. Those are potatoes down there. Um, some people say they're not good. I just, I think potatoes are very good for you. I don't have a problem with them unless you've got a sensitivity to them. Now, how you prepare them, if you uh, just soak them in butter and fry them in grease and all that kind of stuff, maybe not so good. But by themselves, they are wonderful. And if you're trying to stay away from milk products, which is another thing that's good to stay away from cow's milk because it's not meant for human bodies it's meant for a big old heavy animal 500 pound or more animal but um you can use ghee g-h-e-e -E, that's what i'm using and it's not quite as good as butter it's made from butter but they take all the milk solids out and you can make your own as well um but it's really not bad and you get used to it and of course, herbs, all kinds of herbs are, are really good. You need to put herbs in everything. They really are good for your gut. More herbs I've got sitting out here. My mullein leaves drying. Strawberries are wonderful. So, some romaine lettuce coming up there. They're really not that hard to grow, except they don't like the heat. This time of year, they might get a little, start getting harder when the heat comes. Garlics, garlic and onions are wonderful for you. Here's a big old onion plant here. There's celery plant there, garlic plants there. This stuff is so good for you, and it's beautiful. This is some onions that are starting to bloom, and I think they're really pretty. I've got sugar peas in the back. Broccoli, cruciferous vegetables are so good for you. And this is tender. I'm eating the little broccoli shoots. And I pick a bunch of those, and they are tender and sweet and wonderful. Veggies are so important. Veggies need to become your best friends because that's what you mainly want to deal with. The more you, ways you find to eat vegetables, the better. Don't just stick with the same old, same old salad. Change it up. Put different things in your salad. Put nuts and seeds in your salad. Put blueberries and strawberries in your salad is wonderful. Um, change up different types of vegetables. Sometimes vegetables. Sometimes I steam some vegetables and put on top of my salad. Um, and all different types of. There's a lot of healthy dressings you can look up and Google. Uh, you need to major on the veggies for your tummy. Teas are really good. If you just sit around sipping on herb teas, are wonderful. Green and black tea is good for you too. And your herb teas add, you want to switch it out. You want a variety. Variety is very, very important. This is spearmint here. I just um, picked some and I have them. That's what you seen in there on the counter earlier. Um, very, very good for you, for your gut. Uh, peppermint especially is really good for your gut. Any of these herbs are really really helpful it's a whole lifestyle change if you really want to be healthy and you want your gut not to be hurting okay read labels sometimes you just got to have a treat don't go grab a candy bar sometimes i just got to have something sweet a lot of sugar is not good but you can have a little here and there um read the labels this doesn't say it's gluten free but when you check the label on it there is no wheat in it so, there's nothing in it that would have gluten. So, sometimes if you just gotta have it, then get something like this to get rid of that craving that's so strong. This is almond milk that I made this morning. That's what those, that's what that meal is from back there. So, yeah, have your, cheat once in a while. Don't do it all the time, but cheat once in a while. Sometimes it might be two or three mornings in a row. That's what I want, but you know what I do too. I beef it up with like ground flaxseed and some walnuts or something like that. I don't like my videos to be too long, so I want to close with just two things here, and I will leave um, the titles of the companies in down below the video. Uh, you don't want just any iodine. This has helped me tremendously. This is the only company on earth I know that makes it organic niacin iodine. And that's Organics. Uh, organics. I'm not sure how to say it. But that has helped great. I don't take it consistently over a long period of time. I'll take it for a while and take a break. Take it for a while and take a break. It's, I don't use iodized salt 
So I probably am low in it anyway, but I don't know how good that stuff is for you. I use the pink salt, the Himalayan pink salt. But all I know is this is really helping. You've got to figure out your own body and what you need. You may not have a problem with thyroid or anything that's supposed to help thyroid, which your thyroids help your other things. Um, anyway, just it goes on and on. But this just happens to be something that really works well for me. Um, another is Nordic Naturals is a company and they get their cod liver oil, their cod from up way up north or there's not so much mercury and everything. You say, ooh, cod liver oil. Yeah, the old junky kind probably tastes terrible. This actually tastes pretty good. There's like a little lemony flavor to it and it's not bad at all. And this not only has your vitamin D3, which you really, really need, but it has some other stuff in it too. Um, so, you know, you really want to think about these. I, they're really important to get your vitamin A, your vitamin D, um, you get your EPA, DHA, and you know, your omega threes. You can also get omega threes from flax seed, I think it is. And chia seeds have omega threes. And as far as herbs, your purslane which I've talked about before, and I'll probably do some more on. That has omega-3, which is really unusual for a plant. But omega-3s are really important. It's just a lot of gut health is overall, but these seem to have helped in particular with me. If I go very long without my vitamin D, I start having problems with my gut and other stuff. So you also need a lot of vitamin C daily. Take vitamin C. Actually, it doesn't even have to. I heard about a study the other day from this doctor that was talking that they only gave 200 milligrams to these kids and it helped them overcome some problems that they had 200 milligrams a day. I usually, these are 500 milligrams and I eat them all day long. If I walk by and see it and I'm thinking about it, I just grab one and chew on it. I'm going through this pretty fast because it's, I'll probably take sometimes three or four a day. Sometimes I forget and only get one a day, but um, you definitely need to be taking vitamin C, especially in the day and age. If you do some of these things on a consistent basis, you're going to start seeing your health improve and your gut's going to start feeling better. And I have several problems with my gut. And if you've watched my videos very long, you'll know, um, because I've talked about my blockage and stuff. It's a challenge for me. My herbs have been wonderful, but even just healthy living and healthy food, makes a big difference but here's a few things maybe to get you thinking on and i hope it helps uh, if you've enjoyed this and got some information please give me a thumbs up it really helps my videos to get out there and subscribe if you like it and hopefully i can give you some more interesting information but anyway you guys have a blessed day and remember that god is the real healer and if he chooses he can heal you of anything um, I think his greatest desire is to heal us from our sin, to take us to heaven someday. And I, you know, that's where healing truly comes from. And he even, if you study his word, there's places in there where he talks about things that are good to eat and this and that. And he even talks about honey and if you eat too much, how it'll make you sick. But it's good for you. But good things can sometimes be in an overabundance like honey. <laughs> So you want to be careful on your sweeteners. But, um, yeah, I'm going to let you go with that. And hope you all have a blessed day. Bye now.